Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. Now we've got another Distress Ink and Oxide Colour Combination video for you today. We're looking at Lumberjack Plaid. Now, um, just to clear up any confusion on how you pronounce this one, because uh, I did look it up because I was never entirely sure, but basically if you want to go with the original version of this word plaid, um, I go with the Scottish version because plaid refers to a Scottish pattern. It's actually um, Gaelic for the word blanket. So um, there we go. So I'm going to go with lumberjack plaid. Some people would say plaid. So uh, either way, I'm going to go with lumberjack plaid, a lovely red. We're going to do some blending to see what this looks like on white cardstock, uh, how it compares to other reds in the range. And also uh, I'm going to give you not two, but three different color combinations with this one. And I'll tell you the reason as we get into them. So let's first of all blend this into a piece of white cardstock. So it's a beautiful, do you know what, look at that, look how gorgeously rich that is. When you first look at the label you might think it's uh, a lighter red. So let's quickly put some of this onto, I'm going to put it in the middle of this, ready for my first combination. Look how bright that is. Now this is what I would call London bus red. <laughs> That's only my own preference. Um, but look, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I think it's actually coming out quite orange on the screen there, but it is. it does have a really deep berry red to it. So I'll try and make sure that the uh, balance of the color on the video is as accurate as it is to my eye. But let's have a look, first of all, at the label. So it's actually quite similar. It's, sometimes the labels don't represent the color when they're inked onto cardstock, sometimes they do. Now the ink pad is much darker as always, but all pretty uh, much the same, which is good to see because of course when you're purchasing these inks, whether it be online or in a shop, you want to know that the label that you're looking at is fairly accurate. Now let's take a look at my Distress Ink and Oxide Colour Swatch Chart. Now you can download one of these from the link below, that's on my blog. Uh, you download the empty chart and you fill it in yourself and this helps you keep a track of which colours you already have. So Lumberjack Plaid is here, as you can see. Now, interestingly with reds, there's quite a few reds that I think are similar. Now there are variations of course within them, otherwise uh, Mr. Holtz would not have chosen them, but I think a lot of them can be standbys or stand-ins for other colours. So as we can see at the bottom here, Barn Door, very similar, a slightly lighter shade I believe with Barn Door. Crackling Campfire is a bit more of an orange there. Uh, and then if we, Age of Mahogany much darker of course, but if we come up to Fired Brick, Festive Berries, Candied Apples, I think Festive Berries is really quite similar as well. Fire Brick has more of a, a chalky look to it, more of a kind of terracotta look, and Candied Apple is again more on the pinky side, um, pinky orangey side. So um, I think Lumberjack Plaid is definitely the darker of all the reds besides Aged Mahogany, but very, very similar across the board there. So any of the combinations that I'm going to be showing you, I think you could probably substitute certainly Barn Door, Festive Berries, Fire Brick, Candied Apple maybe even Crackling Campfire into any of these to give yourself some different combinations. So let's now pop this to the side and let's get on with our combinations. So as you can see, I put red right in the middle of this one and then I'm going to bring in Aged Mahogany to one end. So let's ink this up. Now Aged Mahogany does have its own video because it's an A. Uh, if you're just joining me for the first time, we're working through all the Distress Oxide colors one by one. I'm uploading them alphabetically and we're looking at them in detail like this. So Age of Mahogany was one of the first being the A's. Um, each one has colour combinations that you can try and what I try to do in a lot of the video descriptions is add in what other colours I've used so you could search through those if you're looking for a particular colour and even more combinations using it. So I've just blended in Aged Mahogany there. That works in really, really beautifully. Now I'm going to throw a bit of a curve ball into the mix of this combination. Let's just um, wet and dry my mat so I don't get any water reacting. The next color is going to be Iced Spruce. We're going for a little bit of a festive feel with this one, I think. It can be used any time of year, of course, but I think this would be quite festive now. I'm just going to pop my 
towel down there just to hold that still for a moment. Look how beautiful this colour is. Again, Ice Spruce does have its own video, so you can go and see that and what other colours you could mix with Ice Spruce. Now, I know already that working this into the red is going to take a little bit of more blending than we just had with the aged mahogany. So I'm going to go back and forth ensuring that I'm conservative with the area that I'm blending because I want to keep the solid ice spruce and the solid um, lumberjack plaid intact there. So just keep going backwards. I'm not, uh, notice I'm not applying any more ink. I'm just sticking with the ink that's already on my blending brushes here. And the blending brushes and the blending mat that I'm using, everything I'm using there is all available linked down below. And there we go. Isn't that gorgeous? So what I tend to do is because the ink is wet, that's going to throw off a little bit the uh, combinations. So I tend to like to just give that chance to dry and then show you that again at the end. So I'm just fixing here a little bit of blending that wasn't quite, I wasn't quite happy with it, but Let's show you this at the end again. You'll see how much better that looks when it's all dry. Because while it's wet, you get the shine from lights and such. You see those damp patches and everything doesn't always look perfectly smooth and creamy as it should. But by the time we've done the other two combinations, that will be nice and dry. But that was Aged Mahogany, Lumberjack Plaid and Iced Spruce. Now, the next combination I'm going to come to is these three so again a dark one and this is the reason I wanted to do three combinations for you today because I'm going quite dark again um, I just think the deep red lends itself to nice um, dark colors so let's come straight in on the end with lumberjack plaid there we go I've got a bit of a score line in my cardstock there so you'll see that that's nothing to do with the inking look how juicy this pad is I do love a freshly inked pad uh, and if you're wondering what it means and you're new to distress oxides you can buy re-inkers for the pad so you don't always have to buy the new pads as long as the surface is still perfectly intact and not damaged you can buy the re-inkers and you can continuously re-ink these um, pads as long as you want to really the ink that comes in the bottle for the Distress Oxide reinkers is it's just going to last you such a long time. So it's well worth purchasing those. So look at how beautifully these two work together. So this is Rusty Hinge. Isn't that gorgeous? Fabulous fiery red and orange going into each other there. Then we're going to throw again another bit of a curve ball and I'm going to go into Hickory Smoke. So this is a grey with a bit of a blue tone. Again, we have done Hickory Smoke as its own combination. So you'll find that on the playlist. Now, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll find that there is a playlist full of all of these combinations and colours that we've done so far. We're working through alphabetically, so we're on to the L's now. Um, so I think there's about 30, between 30 and 35 videos up already. So look again at that. Don't they just work so nicely together? Now one more wipe here and let's bring that into chipped sapphire. So into the blue. Now I tend to keep the previous colour accessible. So the lid off, the brush about. Um, just because very often I need to then go it back into that colour to help with the blending. Usually I can use the excess that's on the brush, but sometimes I need to add a little bit more. Particularly if I've gone a little bit too far with my blending and I've kind of almost lost the colour. So I just wanted to add a hint of blue onto the end there. Now blend that into the hickory smoke. If you don't want your one of your colours going down into the uh, previous colour too much, just do smaller circles. Don't be dragging your brush down from, for example, the blue into the gray. Like I said, I just wanted a hint of blue on the end there because I think the red and the navy work really nicely together. And then we have another complete combination that's quite dark, very masculine. 
Oh, this would suit uh, my my little boy when he was younger. This kind of reminds me of the sort of colours that used to be in his clothes a lot. Reds, oranges, greys and blues. So um, that would be fabulous for, say, a scrapbook page for him. I think this would still look lovely with a black silhouette stamped over the top. So it's almost like a, a sky in the background. So you've sort of got the sun setting and the night sky coming in. Um, but that's really lovely too. So that was Lumberjack Played, Rusty Hinge, Hickory Smoke and Chipped Sapphire. Now I did promise another combination, just one more. We're going to brighten things up a little bit. So let's come back to Lumberjack Played. Put this on the end. So just pop this here. We can do quite a bit of this because we're going for a three colour combination. And this would also work really nicely because of the undertones in it. It would work really nicely into a purple as well. I think with the reds, you've got so many choices of combinations. And like I say, you can kind of mix this up with um, or replace it with other colours that are in the Distress Oxide range. So if you don't have this particular colour at the moment, but it's on your wish list, maybe um, maybe replace it with something like we said earlier, like Barn Door fired brick you'll see those combination videos in that playlist as well so go and have a look at those see where I've um, what combinations I've put those ones in and you could put that into that or you could put fired brick barn door all of those into these combinations instead of lumberjack played so mix them up um, definitely experiment with all of your colors so I'm not going to have too much of the red there I don't think so let's just bring that up a little bit further just using the excess ink that's on my brush already oh, that's blended beautifully into that orange so if we look at the two oranges so that's rusty hinge much darker and that's uh, what was this spiced marmalade so a bit brighter there can you see the difference as well actually this is freshly inked and this is where it's just dried the oxides give this oxidized almost slightly cloudy feel and uh, this is what i mean when you do do some ink blending and i put it aside and i say let's look at that at the end because you get this slightly creamier almost frosted look to it and i think it makes all the difference to how good your ink blending looks as well i think while it's wet all the little imperfections really do show up but once it's dry they look much better so that's half the reason i pop things aside and we come back to them in a little while so then i'm going into fossilized amber so a lovely red uh, sorry it's not red a uh, yellow <laughs> a lovely yellow it's just i know it's going to work really nicely into the spiced marmalade fossilized amber also has its own video there so can check that out look at that so easily done I'm just going to do a little bit more actually just in the center here so that was lumberjack plate spiced marmalade and fossilized amber all three and again you can see the dampness you can see the shiny patches which is throwing off how perfect the um, the ink blending can look so definitely set your pieces aside now let's take a look at the ones we've previously done so we've got these three here look at those aren't they beautiful so that was lumberjack played i hope you've enjoyed this video please do check out the playlist for all the others that i've mentioned and the other colors we've done so far a subscribe would be fantastic i'd love that and uh, please do share this with your crafty friends who might be struggling with choosing their distress oxide colors um, which ones to purchase next and which ones to ink blend into. So thank you so much again and I'll see you again very soon. Take care.